Those of you that know this channel know that one of my most popular videos is a downgrade tutorial for the iPhone 4 and how to downgrade it to iOS 4, 5, or 6. And that was the geek grade method, which is a tethered method for Windows. However, in this video, I will show you an untethered method for Mac OS. So what you need is you need to go to ipsw.me, which I'll link below in the description, and you need to find out what type of iPhone 4 you have. You need to look on the back of it, and if it is a1349, which is CDMA, or A1332, then it will work just fine. However, however, please note that if yours is A1332, and if it's if it if you if you know you have a GSM 2012 iPhone 4, then this will not work. I don't know how to identify them. This is the information on how to identify with them is pretty scarce online. But if you yours is one of the two models that you can downgrade, then you need uh, to find the right IPSW, which in this case, I'm going to be downgrading a CDMA iPhone 4 in this tutorial. And you can choose any IPSW from iOS 7.1.1 all the way down to 5.0 on the CDMA iPhone 4. And then if you're on a GSM iPhone 4, then you can downgrade all the way to iOS 4.0 with the only version not working being 4.2.1 as the developer says of this tool says. And now what you need is you also need legacy iOS kit because this is a tool that we're going to be using to downgrade this. And so, and another thing that you need is you need a 30 pin USB-A cable. I don't know of any 30 pin USB-C cables, but please do not use a dongle because that will cause interference. Again, if all you have is a Mac with USB-C ports, then you can go ahead and try it. But, but please note that might not work. And so you also need a Mac running OS 10, 10.11 El Capitan or later, though 10.13 High Sierra or later is recommended. And so now let's get started with the downgrade and please note that if you run into any issues please watch the rest of the video before commenting before I may address them. So what you need to do is you need to go into terminal which if you don't know where it is it'll most likely be in the other folder of the launch pad. You need to locate where you have downloaded legacy iOS kit open it up. Then you need to find restore.sh and drag it into the terminal then hit enter. And then if it asks you to update the tool you have to do that because it won't work otherwise. So I'll get back to you once it's done updating. So now I'll ask you to run the script again, so you need to go ahead and run restore.sh. Now as you can tell, you need to type one, then you need to type one again, then you need to select your tar target IPSW. So in this case, I will select 5.0. Then you need to select your base IPSW, which I will go ahead and do right now. This is when you'll this is when you'll select the 7.1.2 IPSW. And then what you can do from here is you can go ahead and hit three. And if you want to jailbreak, you can hit yes, otherwise. And please note that you won't be able to jailbreak after you downgrade, so I would go ahead and hit yes. Then memory option, I'll hit yes because it'll speed up the process. Rubo boost, I, I don't really care about that, so I'll say no. Then I'll go ahead and prepare the IPSW, so I'll go ahead and get back to you once this is done. Okay, so now this will ask if you need to, if you want to enter Pwn DFE mode or KDFE mode. I don't really know, know what, I don't know what is the best option, but, I'm gonna say, but it says like why if you're unsure. Ask if both of your home and power buttons are working correctly. And then you need to go ahead and enter DFE mode. So I prefer to do it beforehand. So what you need to do is you need to press the home, home and power button for 10 seconds. Then keep holding the home button for 15 seconds or until iTunes or Finder detects it. So 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. Now let's go ahead and check Finder to see if it's oh, recognized as, it'll say it's in recovery mode, but it's actually in DFU mode. And yeah, I think it's recognized. So now what we'll need to go ahead and do is we will need to go ahead and say no for sending device to recovery mode. 
and then we'll go ahead and do some stuff. So I'll get back to you once it's done or once we need to move on to the next step. So this iPhone 4 is now successfully downgraded to iOS 5.0 and the restore process is now done. However, when I downgraded this iPhone 4 to iOS 4.0, one notable difference was that it asked me to enter DFE mode again four times because this phone entered recovery mode during downgrade, in which case I would, I would have had to have gone into restore.sh. And then I would have, you would have to go into your utilities and then you would have to go to disable and enable exploit and enable the exploit from there. And if you need to restore back to iOS 7, you have to clear the NVRAM because after restoring, because it otherwise won't restore properly. So it will enter recovery mode after you're done restoring. But yeah, I've successfully downgraded, I and hopefully you have successfully downgraded your iPhone 4 to iOS 5.0. So I'll go ahead and get this set up and then I'll show you guys this phone after it's set up. So my iOS 5 iPhone 4 that I just downgraded kind of came up with a common error when trying to activate iOS 5 saying that it cannot be activated, which the only solution I found to this is that you just have to wait quite a while. But if you're on iOS 4, iOS 6, you should have just activated just fine. And so, yeah, that is really all for this video. So as always, thank you all for watching this video. I'm the iTunes family, and as always, peace out.